Hi class! In this video, we'll talk about the procedure and computation for taping on level and on uneven ground. So to start with, we need the following instruments. We have two range poles, a 50 meter tape, chalk, or marking pins. We use chalk on solid pavement. We use marking pins for grass and other soft ground. And then we have two plumb bobs. So the first step is to assign your chief of party. The chief of party marks two points A and B. Once assigned, place a range pole man at point B. This pole man will serve as a guide to move to your path for measuring the distance. Afterwards, we assign two tape men. The rear tape man guides the front tape man, so they ensure that the tape is straight and is aligned with the range pole at B, while the front tape man holds the zero end of the tape and marking pins. As you can see, your rear tape man holds the other end of the tape, your front tape man holds the zero mark and marking pins. Next, we're going to stretch out a tape length. For this case, we're using 10 meters as our tape length, and then align it at point A. So the 10 meter mark should be at A. Okay? It's over here. The front tape man should pull on the tape to make it taut, and then when the rear tape man approves the alignment, the front tape man will stick a pin at the zero mark. As you can see, this is the 10 meter mark at A. The tape length is 10 meters. And then when the alignment is correct, you're going to put a marking pin. Afterwards, both tape men will simultaneously lift the tape and move along path AB. The rear tape man now aligns the 10 meter mark. So in this case, it's at this point. And then afterwards, gets it. And then repeat steps A to 11 while the rear tape man gathers all the pins. So basically, rear tape man aligns your tape, front tape man places the marking pins, and then they're gonna move on to the next marking pin. The rear tape man now gets the placed marking pin, and then that step repeats, so your rear tape man collects all the marking pins. When the rear tape man gathers 10 marking pins, return them to the front tape man and then get one pebble. So one pebble means you have 10 tape lengths since one marking pin denotes one full tape length. And then finally, when you reach point B, you'll have a partial distance, meaning it's less than one full tape length. We're gonna measure that partial distance up to so for example, here. Okay. We're gonna align again the zero mark at range pull B, then read the measurement at the final marking pin. So for this case, we have 19 centimeters. After doing that, you're now going to count the number of pebbles and pins, and then compute for the distance between A and B. Repeat the entire procedure going back and forth until you reach the number of trials needed. So for this case, upon finishing the first trial, we have three pebbles and two pins. And then we've measured a partial distance. After getting all of those information, we can compute for the distance between two points. So that's the first part of the field work taping on level ground. Now what happens when we have irregular ground or uneven ground? So the steps are similar to your previous procedure for level ground. However, for irregular ground, you must elevate your tape to eye level. Next, the front tape man holds the tape and plumb up at arm's length away, as you can see here, so that the rear tape man can check if it is aligned with the range pole at B. The rear tape man also must ensure that the plumb bob and the 10 meter mark is directly above point A. After doing that, when the rear tape man approves the alignment, the front tape man pulls the tape taut, then drops the plumb bob. The plumb bob will then make an indent on the ground, thus marking it, as you can see here. And then you're going to place a marking pin on the indent. So the rest is just the same procedure as your level ground. So after placing the marking pin, the rear tape man and front tape man will move forward. Rear tape man will align themselves again on the marking pin. After aligning, you're gonna get the marking pin and then repeat steps all over again until you reach point B where there's a partial length, so you just have to measure that up to centimeters. And then number six, count the number of pebbles and pins and compute for distance between A and B. So to get the distance, we have the following equations seen in your fieldwork manual. So first, your number of tallies is equal to the number of pebbles. So number of tallies just means the number of times you measured 10 tape lengths. And then the number of tape lengths is just the number of tallies times 10, 
because each tally is equal to 10 tape lengths. And then plus the number of pins since each pin equals one tape length. And then to get the final length of the course AB, you multiply the number of tape lengths by the length of one tape length. In our case, that was 10 meters. And then you just add your partial length of tape. For example, here in this situation, we have tape length as 10 meters. It can be different. You can use 5. Just make sure it's not too long because that would create sagging, which is a source of error in taking measurements using a tape. And then for trial 1, 3 pebbles and 2 pins. So number of pebbles 3, number of pins 2. Partial tape length was computed to be 19 centimeters. Convert that to meters so that's 0 0.19 meters. Therefore, computing the number of tape lengths, that's number of pebbles times 10. So 3 times 10 plus number of pins 2. So we have 32 tape lengths in total. Once we're done this sum, just means we have 10 tape lengths for every pebble. Okay, this does not mean... And then to get the measurement of the distance between your points A and B, just multiply the number of tape length by the value of each tape length and then plus your partial tape length. So you're going to get 320.19. So now repeat the process and then compute for trial 2 and trial 3. And then finally, you're going to get the mean distance, which is just the average of the three distance between two points that you've computed for. And then we'll get 320.18 as our final answer. So that is the data that you'll put into your preliminary data sheet. So it's going to look something like this. So again, for this scenario, just complete this table, looking at the format of your preliminary data sheet for fieldwork number two. You have this. Okay? So just complete this table. So once again, we have your three trials, one to AB, and then going back to A, and then once again, moving from A to B. So just input the data gathered, and then solve for the final two columns. Same thing with irregular ground. We have your information here. And you just have to compute for the computed distance and mean distance. So for your preliminary data sheet, I'm going to upload the data that you need under week 2. So all you have to do is compute, complete the table, and then accomplish your preliminary data sheet. Include sample computation and sketch. And then just send it to me via submission link again found in week 2. So that's it for fieldwork number 2. In the next video, we'll talk about fieldwork number 3.